Mikey with Lawn Dude here. So what is it that you guys do to keep to keep going? Especially the uh, solo owner operators. As some of you may know, especially if you've heard, um, I'm not sure if part two of my background will be out at this point. Um, for sure, at least if you've heard part one. You know that I ran a crew of a couple guys and went down to just me within the last two years. I was sales the end of 2022 when I went solo and ended up having my best year. Well, on paper, it was my best year. You know, solo was my best year financially. It's hard to believe that when think about the fact that I'm by myself. But I will say we did get certain pieces of equipment to make the job quicker for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to make the job quicker for me as a solo owner operator. Like I was getting a bunch of big properties. We invested in a 72 inch, uh, a right ZK 72 with the dualies. So I'm able to do these wide open properties, even if they're wet. That machine with them dualies will not run it up, it will not get stuck. It can hold to inclines. We went out and got the ZK 61 the year before with the bagging use, uh, system to make that process easier for me as far as leaf cleanups and removals. We also invested in a stand-on blower. Now that has made it, thank God, to where I can take care of cleanups um, solo. I've been on some big cleanups and been able to knock them out solo with that stand-on blower. You know, I have stand-on aerator, um, Z-spray, LTS, um, spreader sprayer. It's just a whole lot of equipment that we got to kind of make things easier for me as a solo owner operator. And I say all that to basically say this. While last year on paper, the year 2023 was our best financial year. It wasn't as profitable as I would like it to be because, you know, we got equipment. Uh, we have equipment. Let me try it like I can speak here. <laughs> so we have equipment. Uh, a lot of my equipment is finance. So you can already do the math here. The top line and the bottom line aren't exactly, I mean, top line, I would say is pretty much in the right direction, but it's all about that bottom line. And the bottom line, to me, isn't where it needs to be, which is what I'm working on now. So I did have my best, you know, financial year. Went back to the basics, had fun at times, and other times I was just tired. For me to take the business to the level that I took it to in 23, it was a lot. Between the kids' sports and most who know me know I don't miss anything. I don't care if it's a practice. I want to be there. I just want to be there because I know my kids are only going to be young, but for so long, man, I want to be there. Uh, I'm the guy who actually likes, you know, I like to spend time with my wife. You know, I want to be there, you know, so it's like. While I am working. Because I have this equipment, I'm maximizing the time, the production time I have out in the field. And I say all of this to say, it is a lot of work, and it was a lot of work, still is, because I'm still at it by myself, solo op owner-operator. 
it is a lot of work trying to um, basically maintain everything as it is when it's just you. When I'm the only one going out in the field, you know, I'm doing the admin work right now. I am trying to get some help from my wife on certain things. But as of right now, I'm doing everything I've and it is it is a lot. I could sit here and say, Oh yeah, I do this, I do that, oh yeah, I'm big and bad, but I'm gonna sit here and be honest. That's the point of this podcast. I'm gonna keep it candid. I'm gonna keep it one hundred, man. I'm gonna give you the real deal Holyfield. And when I say all that, what I'm saying is it is a lot of work, man. And a lot of people get burnt out in these situations. So what I'm saying is, what do you do when you're getting, feeling like you're getting burnt out? I feel myself getting in this zone, honestly, more often than I like to admit. It's literally because I do so much. You go out, you complete a route. And then instead of being able to just relax a lot of times, you come home and you realize, oh, man, I got to do maintenance on the machine. Oh, man, I got to do my closeouts for the day, you know, uh, close out my jobs for the day and answer any emails or client calls, schedule estimates before I can even relax. I need to do oil change on that truck. I need to do oil change on that machine. You know, so on and so forth. It's always something to do as a business owner. Ways I've tried to combat this and am still doing to this day that so far I feel like it it works for the most part. I try to systematize as much as I can. Most know I have Yardbook. When I use Yardbook, um, I have pretty much everything set up to where it's pretty much systematized. It's easy. I'm a planner. So if I have a certain piece of equipment that I need for the next day, usually that's already preloaded onto the truck for the next day. Gassed up, everything's gassed up. So the next day I can just roll and get through my route quicker. If I have time when I'm in the field, like, say if I'm done, it's rare that this happens, but if I, like, finish my route at a decent time, I have my iPad with me. I go ahead and schedule whatever estimates, e- uh, answer emails, stuff of that nature. And if I can get off at a decent time, I go pick up my daughter from school that day, and that is something I like being able to do. I even like dropping them off in the morning when I have extra time when the route's not too busy. Like these are things I like to do and they actually keep me from suffering for so much from so much burnout, to be completely honest with you. I also like to try to schedule a certain day of the week when I have a lower a smaller route to do maintenance. But I'm finding that what I'm really not liking to do is the is the cruddy thing that most of us have to do, which is scraping them decks, climbing up underneath the deck, changing blades. As you know, I have a lot of mowers, so I'm under quite a bit of mowers. I'm changing quite a bit of blades. I'm talking about 15, 20 blades every time I do blade sharpenings and changes. So what I'm thinking about doing is, you know, my man Hev, as you know, he still goes out and always always ready to help wherever needed. I'm trying to get to where I have the blade sharpened on the RB712, which simplifies things. And he can just pick a day of the week or whatever, and he can just go and scrape the blades and zip on and zip out the old ones and zip on the new ones and uh help out in that capacity and i pay him to do that 
I already said trying to get my wife to help in other areas too. My boy Dom, he's looking, he's hungry too. I'm trying to, I sell big jobs. I know he's available. I know Hev's available. I know if my man Phil's available, he'll he'll come out and help me out. So what I'm trying to do is maximize, not only maximize, uh, well, I'm not even going to say maximize. I'm trying to decrease how much I throw on myself because I throw on so much. I have, I have great family and friends that I've been blessed with. I have those who are hungry, as hungry as I am who'd like to be out here hustling with me. So what I'm trying to do is get my business to be an actual business because the way I'm running right now, it's more so a job. And I would definitely get burned out if I got to keep doing it that way. So what is it that all of you guys do to avoid burnout? Try to keep my weekends off as well. That helps. Um, back to the blade situation. I also had those Ballard gold blades. I will say they last a lot longer. I was changing my blades every week. Sometimes you got to do them twice a week. You hit one rock and all of a sudden you got a chip in the blade. Well, with these gold blades, I'm not even going to lie to you. I've cut jacked up fields and it has lasted up to two weeks. No problem. And it can go further than that. I just prefer not to go any further. But systematize as much, as many things as you can. I'm one of those guys who has, unfortunately, has no problem buying equipment that will buy me back my time. That's really what it is. I would love to spend my time on these fields for my kids. I would love to spend time with my wife family, friends, and I can't do that if I'm out working all the time, which is why a lot of times I'll take on a payment before I say, let me just work that much longer to make up this kind of money. I know this is kind of all over the place. But this is really about uh, how do we deal with burnout, man, and how I'm kind of trying to get through it. I try not to overwhelm myself as well when it comes to this. Uh, I know this the things I'm passionate about. You learn your strengths, especially as an employer, because you're always looking at him. You know, the guys you hire, you're always looking at their strengths and what they do best. It's like when I had a team of guys working for us, I used to always look at their strengths and wherever their weaknesses were, was where I stepped in, whether it was trimming, edging, you know, mowing, I would step in that department. But I'm learning the things you're more passionate about are the things that you love doing, the things that have you loving Monday instead of hating it. For me, uh, I find operation seems to be what I'm good at. And what I'm more passionate about. I'm not so passionate about having to do admin tasks, sitting in front of a computer. But those are necessary tasks that had to be done. Most people would rather do that than be out in the dirt or cutting grass or out in the elements. But I prefer to be running the equipment. I think that's what's made it hard for me to kind of think moving forward about... You know, one of the things that help with burnout will be at some point to get that right hand man and then the helper for them. But I just told you I want to run a business and not have a job. So I'm definitely in the future. I have to get this. I have to get this business and it starts with me raising this top line up. I have to get this business where I can bring in the right hand man and helper. They can go out and mow and I can do what I'm passionate about. I can keep that 72 inch on duels go do the wide open properties that'll take me a day doing fields whatever i need to do that day and every other day of the week i can do sales i can do customer service i can do applications aerations and many skits do work these are the jobs i'm passionate about so i know i'll have fun doing them and 
while I'm having fun doing them, they're also the more profitable jobs in the company. A lot of guys I know, they just completely get rid of mowing and they go do what they're passionate about. Well, for me, one thing I can say about mowing is it is consistent income. So if you can actually find solid people who you can have drive a box truck, it's not driving a trailer, so it's a lot easier. Drive a box truck. Um, I would probably supply it with a uh, 61 inch mower, 61 inch stand on, 32 inch stand on, and a 21 inch mower. And that's, that's all they'll have. That's all they'll need. And I'll go out with, like I said, the 61. I'll go out with the truck and trailer, 20 foot trailer. Most of the times I'll just have the 61. And since it's a 20 foot trailer, I can have whatever else I need for that day, whether it's a stand on blower, you know, whether it's aerator or multiple things I may need, a mini skid steer, spreader sprayer, whatever I need that day. I want to be able to take out. But that's, uh, this is a little bit all over the place. This is kind of like what my plan is to continue to do a burnout. It's all connected. At some point, me making this more of a business will help with the burnout because then I'm dependent on more people. And what we have a problem with as business owners is we're so doggone hands on and it's, it's like our baby, you know, it's our business. So we're so hands on. We're so worried that this won't get done the way we do it. We're so worried about how to come up with the money for this person to that person. But what's funny is no matter how many times we're told that when we hire, make certain hires, we'll actually get more money in the long term. No matter how many times we're told that we still look at, oh, I can't afford that person. You know what I mean? I can't afford to pay myself. I'm still screaming that right now. I can't afford to pay myself. But if I need a piece of equipment, you know, we're able to find a way to cover that. So I need to get out of that way of thinking. Especially if I want to sit here and say I'm a man of God. Because he's always provided and he always will. He, Like, there's something I should, I do know. But we stand in our own ways as business owners, man. And I'm taking a stand right here and saying that I'm not standing in my way no more. I'm going to stand aside because I will get burnt out trying to do everything myself. So in other words, I'm going to get help where I can get help or where I need to get help. I'm able to handle the field work, the operations at the moment, by the grace of God. But when that time comes, I'm going to have to listen loud and clear and be ready. All right, y'all, just a little quick thing, man. Let me know what y'all do with burnout, uh, how y'all uh, get through it, especially if you're a family man. I know for me, hanging with the family, chilling with the family, spending time with them actually helps me with burnout. It gets your mind off the business. And me personally, I've been working on getting better when it comes to being around my family, thinking about nothing but my family. Because I'll be the first to say I'm that guy. I'm that guy that when I'm not in the business, not out there doing business stuff, it's hard to shut your mind off from it. But it's necessary to keep you from burnout. It's necessary so you can actually relax. Y'all let me know how y'all deal with everything, what y'all plans are moving forward and everything else. All right, y'all, take it easy. And like I said, this is the real deal, Holyfield. I'm going to keep it 100 all the time, man. Like, it's too many people out here adding, like, everything is sunshine and rainbows. It's not. <laughs> These are real struggles that business owners, actual business owners, go through. It gets you to that area, basically, of depression. I'm not saying that'd be funny. I'm being completely serious. There are times when you get low points. That's a whole nother podcast for me. I'll be here another hour talking about it if I get into those points. Because I have had those moments. I will be the first to tell you that. Of low points and being a business owner. But we'll get into that another time. This one right here is about burnout. We all go through it. How do we deal with it? Y'all take it easy.
Peace.